Welcome to the Motoring Podcast. This is a review special edition of the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Hello, I'm Alan. Hello, I'm Andrew. And you mean Fev. I do mean Fev, but I thought that in the title I should at least say it properly. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we should. We? I, I have spoken to people at Mitsubishi uh, in the last few days, and I did call it a Fev and then went, oh, I'm terribly sorry, it is a PHEV, isn't it? <laughs> It has now become the norm for me. I do apologise, everyone. It is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Yep. So, what we're going to do in this special edition is, fun enough, talk about the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Because, Andrew, you had one on loan uh, for a week. a week or so. Yeah, A week, yes. Um, it was the GX5H 2-litre petrol. Fev Auto. That's a fine <laughs> piece of word salad. What does it actually mean? Uh, there is a two-litre petrol engine and an electric engine, and it had an automatic gearbox. And it was top of the range. And it was top of the range. Cool. Which was reflected in the price. Go on, then. On the road, mm-hmm. uh, 40899 which includes the two and a half thousand pound government grant for plug-in cars sorry sorry so so that's it's already the two and a half thousand pounds already been taken off yes ouch and we need to add 550 for color tax all right which was a which was a rather smart atlantic gray actually suited yeah. it very well. all right um i have i have been on uh, mitsubishi's website to look at monthly costs because as we know more and more people are buying their cars uh, via monthly uh, HP or PCP. Mm-hmm. And I stuck in a £3,000 deposit with a 10000 uh, annual mileage, which yeah. comes out at <clears throat> £1,054.28 for HP. And for how many years? Sorry. Have I sorry, this is 36 months. Honesty. Sorry, this is 36 oh, months. Oh, so that's over three years. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to go down the PCP route, it is £696.26p, obviously with a big lump sum at the end of that to pay. Yeah. Mm, okay. But most people just give back at the end of the PCP. Mm-hmm. But also, also, at the moment, up until... Uh, if you order a ve- order one of these before the 28th of December this year, 2016, mm-hmm. um, you will get a free Charge Master installation uh, to your house, which will allow you to plug in directly um, at a higher rate than um, an extension lead. And that way, which is not the recommended way to charge battery by the way um and it takes longer as you will appreciate plus you get six months free access to the network okay oh that's uh, not so while bad. you're out and about so um so there is that but mm-hmm. if that price and that model is a little bit too steep for you the the range does start at thirty one thousand seven hundred and forty nine pounds for the gh uh, the gx three h sorry and that also includes the government grant of two and a half thousand pounds okay so that's so that's a bit more palatable actually yes when you think about that that's uh it's well, five c obviously uh, um, i say obviously because you haven't told me that it couldn't fit the whole family in um so that's a five c reasonably sized sized suv as well so that's with some clever tech so that's not so bad yeah i mean it'd be interesting to see if prices change um next year when the government's uh benefit in kind Mm-hmm. Um, tax rates change as well. Yeah, because it's possible. Forty thousand is the is the trigger point, isn't it? So yeah, that's true. Um, but there, there's there's all sorts of other other deals as as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I yeah. think if you shop around, you you will get money off. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was only using the official stated figures on Mitsubishi's website for that. Okay. I mean, I've already said it's, it's, of course, everybody know everybody, everybody's aware that it's a five seat SUV uh, with hi, uh, plug in hybrid uh, powertrain. What is it? Two, two litre, did you say? Two litre, four cylinder uh, uh, petrol engine. Okay. Uh, mated to an automatic um, 
man- uh, automatic transmission in this case. Mm-hmm. But with with this one, actually, it was interesting because mm-hmm. Mitsubishi designed the Outlander, uh, this version of the Outlander, from the ground up to be a, a hybrid, plug-in hybrid. All right. Okay. So it's not. So there's, there's it's not. There was- oh, we've got a SUV. Mm-hmm. Hang on, we could probably throw some batteries and a motor in there. No, it's not been done that way. It was done the other way around. So it was done. So it was actually originally a dedicated space for the battery and 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 stuff as well. Yep. Okay. So so I had this for a week and uh I used it on uh typical family duties of school runs and things like that and then there was a uh, an extended journey to visit friends over a weekend uh using motorways, dual carriageways and A roads and mm-hmm. back again. Right. So it's had a full, you know, it's it's been given a full gambit of uh roads to drive on actually how did it handle how did it hand, handle that i mean let, let's start i mean obviously this isn't this isn't it's not a car which it's a car that you're more likely to buy than i'm more likely to buy so how did it hand up handle the the whole uh the whole windscreen mob um pretty good actually the uh the rear is got fairly decent access um the, mm-hmm. the doors don't open fully 90 degrees no. Um, but still, there's there's decent enough access in there. The seats are quite high up in the back, so the little people are not feeling trapped uh, or um, without access to windows in which to smear themselves against to peer out of. Um, because all car, it seems to be so many cars now come with privacy glass in the back, so yeah. they they can feel a little bit claustrophobic. But that wasn't the case here. Um, okay. S- I was a little bit surprised that the the floor in the back wasn't completely flat. There is just a, ever such a slight um, transmission tunnel, mm-hmm. which wasn't a big thing, but it was. But I I, I noticed it because it it didn't affect um, passengers getting in and out. It didn't affect adults getting in and out actually in the back of that. Um, but it's just I noticed it was there because it was so. I think if it had been larger, I probably wouldn't have noticed it as much. All oh, right, just because um, it was. Just the hint of a transmission. Tunnel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's less than an inch or so, but you just <laughs> notice that suddenly the floor wasn't flat. So, um, the kids loved the uh, the mood lighting. Is how it's put in the brochure for <laughs> the footwells. What colour was it? Blue. Yeah, I suspected as much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's such a silly little thing, but it. it it actually, it, it, you know, the kids laughed and they go, oh, look at that and stuff. So for, you know, it, it's such a silly little thing, mm-hmm. why not? You know, it just, it's a little moment where people smile. Surprise and delight feature. Yes. 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 It serves no real purpose, but okay, we, we'll take that. <laughs> I mean, when I had it, the, 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 the nights were not as short as they are now. So, uh, or as long even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> God. Given uh, it's November. No, the right? nights feel really short for me at the moment. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> so, so, go, so go on then. I, I got, I got grief. Uh, I, I got grief on a on a recent review for 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 my scoffing at, at your um, uh, uh, curry hook fetish. What was it like in the boot? Was there anywhere to hang shopping bags and? Yeah, the boot was uh, okay. It's slightly slightly compromised because the, of the whole EV fevness of the vehicle anyway. So mm-hmm. there is a slight loss of depth in the boot. Um, oh, right. And there's no spare wheel um, because that all happens in that space. Okay. Um, but it's not uh, a massive amount. Uh, you know, it just, it's, it's not inhibitive. In, mm-hmm. in any way. Um, th- Does it just down- mean that there's no kind of cellar in the boot? Yeah. There's, there, you can't say, oh, look, there's clever storage underneath the floor. Oh, okay, fair enough. Thanks, because it, it's where the charging um, the charging cable and adapter goes uh, in a special little nook there and, and things like that. But well, that's again- quite good that they've thought, and if, because that can be a really unwieldy thing to have hanging around. I mean, we've seen that in, in cars in the past. That the, the charging cable is is something which rattles around and is annoying because they weren't designed in with a, a space for them. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, that's that's true. Um, and behind talking of um, clever little spaces, um, 
the floor isn't completely flat all the way through the whole boot. I mean, there's a big central uh, flat area between the wheel arches, but behind the wheel arches towards the back of the car, there is Mm -hmm. the typical sort of dip and sort of punch in the in the hole where you can stick carrier bags as well. So, oh, okay. So there's that. But interestingly, um, there was two cup holders on the driver's side wheel arch, and then a small um, just cubby hole on the passenger wheel is arch. That, and so, yeah, in hang the on. boot is, is that in, in the boot? boot? It is in the boot. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but I guess I, for your picnic, what is it the Americans call that tailgating? Yes, it's for, pic- it's for picnicking, isn't it? For, for sitting yeah. there watching the, I don't know, NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> Take your outlander too. But there's also a charging point in the back there for 12-volt um, uh, charging adapter. So, cool you know, boxes. if you've got, uh, you know, they, they've thought of what will that space be used for. So uh, that was... Mm. That was that was interesting to see. I mean, uh, for our weekend away, it happily held all our cracked windscreen mess underneath mm-hmm. the um, retractable uh, cool. boot cover or the luggage cover. So, in other words, it, it functioned as a it functioned pretty well as a as family transport. Yes, absolutely. Um, so that was all the back seat in the boot. What was it like in the cabin? Uh, the cabin, well, you know what I mean. The front seat, oh, the front cabin. Yeah, the front where, where the pilots are. Where the pilots are, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's a nice area. Uh, mm-hmm. Plenty of space. Uh, electric seats on the driver's side. Um, the one I, the model that I had, had Nappa leather. Um, so obviously that's <laughs> very pleasant to sit on. Um, the seats had nice little bits of uh, side support. They weren't sports seat but there was a nice bit of side support there, heated and all that sort of stuff. Um, central armrest, under which there was quite a deep, big cubby hole with charging point um, connectable areas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The, I mean, if we, if we, if if you're the driver yourself, then um, the buttons and stuff like that, they're, they're fairly well laid out. Um, the steering wheel does have a, a lot of things on it, but it, they mm-hmm. were easy to use. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't confusing, you know, if you see what I mean. It was, uh, you know, this is obviously the cruise control. This is obviously the other thing. Um, so, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was a nice place to sit in and you knew what you were doing. Um, the only thing I, the, the major problem I had with this car was the infotainment system <laughs> right uh did not enjoy the infotainment system and i know this is something that mitsubishi are aware of and i believe it's something they're working on to improve but it was quite small it was fiddly to use and there was it wasn't as intuitive as you'd hope did it bing as you went around corners yes <sighs> is that not right I, I've got to confess here. You know the whole um oh, I've now forgotten what it's called. What they actually call that. You you know, rear view when you ask people what's the most ridiculous option. Yes. It's to me it is, and I discovered this not so long ago, it is a sat nav that when you go into a corner on a wiggly road, what it does is distract you by binging at you. <laughs> so that for me is is it's, it's not corner assist, it's corner it's drive alert or something it's called, but it, oh gee, yes, it took me a while. Yeah, yes, um, but the the sat nav itself is not a good sat nav. Okay, to use it was um, it was so hard to work out how to put an address in. Okay. Fine once you fine once you understood the particular path it needed you to go down, um, but to just walk to. The thing is, we're so used to now going up to a screen, pressing buttons, and it will do what we think it's going to do. Yes, it is a God-given right not to have to read instructions. Yes, so when you come up against one that you press buttons and it doesn't do, that causes you problems because you don't pull out the manual. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. don't. There was another feature that caused uh, us to go onto forums. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's quite bad. Well, no, it's it's not bad, but we needed to know what it was. Uh, 
in amongst the lights, uh, the vanity lights, uh, interior lights at the front behind the uh, rear view mirror, Mm -hmm. there is a small orange light that comes on. Now, I've never experienced this before, this small orange light that came on. So we're driving along, and uh, it, they, the car I had had a sunroof, which was great. It helped make the interior, which wasn't that dark, but it just lifted it, the atmosphere that much more by having natural light in it. Um, so I, I driving along, I glance up, oh, oh, no, why is that light on? What have I done? Was my immediate hmm. thought. I, I've oh, done something wrong. I think I know what it was. So we're driving along and we're, we're going to our destination. And then, meanwhile, Mrs. Crap Windscreen is going, hmm, I don't like that quick, furiously onto forums as I'm driving along on her phone. Uh, and it turns out that when you switch the, <laughs> the headlights on, there is a little interior l- warning up in the roof of your car, <laughs> as opposed to the, the symbol... On your dashboard that tells you you've put so the warning on. lights for the headlamps is in the. No, I thought a, you were going to tell me separate... the passenger the passenger uh, the passenger airbag one. No, that's where the... I thought that story was going. No, this is a separate warning. Your dashboard has the oh look you've got your main beams you've got your uh, main headlights on, you know the green mm-hmm. uh, headlight thing, but this this also comes on. Is it to give a warm ambiance in the cabin? No, it's a very, very tiny little light. It, it's apparently from other markets. Other oh, okay. markets demand this feature, oh. which I oh, don't well. understand. Lucky, lucky them, then. I'm glad they don't have it. Um, but, oh, that caused a minor panic. Especially uh, if it's orange as well, because orange is like there's a minor problem type light. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was a, That's a warning light to me. That's not a just telling you something's happening light. That's a warning light. So, um, so yes, I, I digress slightly off... Um, the, the car, but yes, yeah, so that was a little little moment one had. So, so let me drag you kicking and screaming about back and back from that kind of technology. Um, was there anything else that was particularly? Uh, you said the the infotainment system was was not the greatest. Um, mm. <sighs> things else? things I did like. Um, yeah, it on, had it had a three hundred and sixty degree camera, um, which I like them. Having never used before um, was interesting because it was, I've heard about them and it's one of those, yeah, well, I don't really see the point in that. And now I've had the opportunity to use it in situations where it's useful, such as parking, um, particularly uh, next to, uh, I mean, to to charge the car, which I did a couple of times from home. Uh, The way that our street is laid out, I had to park right up against our, uh, wall to be able to get an extension cable out of our house to then put the adapter in to get to the uh, Outlander. Mm-hmm. So having the ability to have uh, the drop-down camera and the, three, mm-hmm. the 360-ness of it, which was very slick, actually. It looked, considering the infot- a lot of things on the infotainment didn't look very modern, this came across really well. Okay, um, that's great. Gra- in a graphic point of view, um, but it, it just it, and then I thought, okay, I can see the sense in that now. I mean, it's very, it's quite a few use cases, and it, and I would class this as a nice to have. But mm-hmm. the fact I could use it was nice, uh, and it did help. Um, so that was it, and 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 it also we have um, the obligatory uh, reversing camera. Which is great. Well, yeah, I um, assumed as part of the rear view, as three hundred and sixty, you would. Um, yeah. Um, so you could you could have the two actually on the screen. So you oh, could right. have the both. top down and the rear view um, thing. So that that was that was helpful. Um, so regenerative braking as well. This was my first time of really having a go at regenerative regenerative braking. <laughs> Let alone pronouncing it. <laughs> yes, quite. So this is where the car itself. Uh, uses the energy um, or, or uses braking as a, a way to charge the batteries back up. And there are several settings. So you can go from quite weak to 
really quite strong where you don't really need to use the brakes yourself very much. So, if so you tell time me this. it right. Okay, so tell me this. So the, whenever, the, when you say it's regenerative, does that mean it was regenerative on the brake pedal or was it regenerative when you lifted off the throttle? Lifting off the throttle. Depending Lifting on the off setting. the throttle. Okay, so it was a bit, Depending it was very much like engine braking. Yes. Yes. So uh, if you set it at its strongest setting, which is what I ended up doing towards the end of the week because I was comfortable with the settings and the feelings of it then, um, mm-hmm. is that a lot of times I would not have to brake on my typical journeys yeah. because the car was breaking into corners and things like that for me. But So what it made you do, actually, which is a, a, a nice uh, bonus is that it made you anticipate your driving. Mm. So you were planning ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we've a friend of the show, Richard Gooding, has said this um, to us on our, um, our alternative fuel special edition, that uh, you feel bad when you actually have to use the brakes because you should have anticipated that you... That, that that manoeuvre was going to need to happen, so you shouldn't really need to use your brakes. And you feel like you've wasted something. Yeah. Um, and and I did find, I mean, I only had it for a week, but I did find that I the way I drove did change. Um, mm-hmm. And it, and that was that was interesting to, to realise, actually. You mentioned earlier on charging and how you had to squiggle up near to the house and stuff because you don't have a home charger. Mm. How, how did you find charging in general? Because that's the bit that's, you know, uh, different. That, that, uh, now this was, was that good, this huh? is just, this is, well, this is just a very personal thing because the infrastructure near where I live and we are very near one of the major cities in the Northwest is appalling. Frankly, okay. I've got one charging point, one public charging point within seven miles. And it's okay, not on any not normal route I would do. I would have to go out of my way to charge up on it. Uh, on the other regular-ish, longer journeys I do, there are a couple of charging points, but not many. Uh, when I get to my destination, it's okay, because I, you know, I, know, I know who I've gone to visit. But again, um, they don't have electrified vehicles, so this is through an extension cable and stuff like that. But, but of course, you don't have a charging point at, at home. Because, but if you, but if you, if I had a charging point it, at home, yeah, if, yeah, if I bought one of these and got the charging point, I think it would just be one of those things that you do, like when you make sure you've locked your car. Yeah, okay, you just plug it, it in would anyway. Be, it would be part of your routine of leaving the car at home. <laughs> you know, I, I plug it in, press the button, go inside, cup of tea, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but it, it, until, I mean, because I've seen a lot of, it, it, well, until the infrastructure outside of urban areas can improve, and particularly on not on motorways, this needs to happen as well. Mm-hmm. That's that is the hurdle for people, particularly with range anxiety. However, I'm in a what? plug-in hybrid. Yeah, it is not essential that I have. You know, the whole point is that I can still manoeuvre around, which I did. I did because I mean, the best I got uh, was 18 miles out uh, range-wise, mm-hmm. um, out of the electric only. But I didn't make any compromise uh, to how I drove the car to. Things like aircon was on, um, you know, music was playing, that sort of stuff. Lights were on, it, you know, all that sort of thing. I <laughs> made compromises to that. I didn't. And Mitsubishi are very good at giving you a guide of look to maximise your battery. Here are things you should consider or try to do, which will help uh, get you towards that maximum of thirty-two miles. That it's officially said um, is the is the maximum range on uh, EV only. Remind me, it gamifies um, as well, doesn't it? Yes. Not that I, not that I got the the maximum <laughs> gamification. So I how uh, few leaves did you get? Uh, no, I got two. Got two. Okay. Two out. I have three. no idea how many there are. No, is it three or is it five? I think it's five. It's four. Or then five, I got. Then it? I got uh, 
three out of the five or it was two out of three. I can't, sorry, I can't remember. No. Um, but I, I never got the maximum. I never so, got the maximum. So if it's a, 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 it's a, it's a hybrid, how, how obvious was it when the petrol engine came in and, and, and went out? Was it, was it pretty much seamless? Um, could you hear it? What was, what um, was yeah, the, it, it what was the effect? Well. Uh, uh-huh. As in you didn't, it's, it, there, was, there was no if you've never driven a hybrid there was no worry of oh hang on the electric slows down oh now the petrol takes over there was none of that from, no, a, sort of, mm-hmm. from a delivery of power point of view it's it's seamless okay but be, if you have been on electric only mm-hmm. then obviously a internal combustion engine makes noise and it does vibrate and you will feel it. however I thought that you were very well isolated in the cabin from okay. that. I think the Mitsubishi done a very good job on that point. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what about road and wind noise? Because that can quite often be, you know, in, in 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 EVs and stuff. It's something that because you don't have, normally have that petrol engine in the background, that it's all much more obvious in a in a vehicle the shape of the Outlander. Is that was well, that noticeable? It's an SUV, so it? you you are going to get some wind noise. You are. Um, we were on big uh, eighteen inch proper tires. Which helped a bit with the ride comfort. I felt proper tires. Proper tires, not no low prof, low profile nonsense here. Oh, okay, okay. So there was actually some sidewall to them. Then. Yes, there was. They weren't white walled, but they were sidewall. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I'm assuming it wasn't a caterham then. And if you've got no. some sidewall to the tires, then there's possibly going to be some ride comfort in there. Yes, there was. There was, although um, some sometimes. It, the ride did get a bit unsettled. However, you're in an SUV. You're not in a sports car. Mm-hmm. Um, so you I think some of it was uh, due to rubbish roads as much as anything. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, it's you know it's over two tons, two point three tons. I think the the Outlander is, and um, because of the batteries and everything, it weighs a little bit more than you would think uh, the vehicle does. That's be good for the ride, though. But because of that, I think they've stiffened the suspension slightly to prevent any roll and all that okay. sort of stuff and wallowing in corners. So, you know, it, mm-hmm. it can, it, it's controlled enough round corners. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, I drove it along fairly enthusiastically and there was no <laughs> complaints from uh, the horde in any way, either verbal or very obviously otherwise. So, very obviously <laughs> Breaking, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, I don't know anyone that does that. No, that's cool. Excellent. So, I mean, we've... Oh, the only thing we haven't talked about, really, is is what it looks like on the outside. So... Well, I think it's... I think it's... I mean, they are massively popular. Yeah. So people will have seen... Outlander Fevs around, mm-hmm. um, but I, I think they're, I think they're a pretty handsome car, and they've not gone down the monstrously slashy swoopy style. All the styling, yes, quite. They haven't done that. I mean, there's one strong line down each flank, mm-hmm. and they've stuck that. And there's a few little touches, you know, when it comes to lines of um, body panels and how they meet and move on with other. Things like rear lights and all that, which I which I quite enjoy because you know I'm odd that way that I look out for these things. Uh, so they, yeah. they 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 followed each other, which was nice to see that some thought had been put in there. Mm-hmm. The front uh, is a little bit predatory ish. Predatory-ish? <laughs> what? Some junior Lexus then? Well, it's not as it's not as child scaring as that, but you okay. you can see the. You can see the angles of how the grill is pulled out in the lower half and things like that, mm-hmm. um, which, is, to be honest, in the way they've um, executed, it's not a bad look. It's not a bad look at all, actually. Okay. Um, I mean, it's a little. It's quite long because it's what is it f- nearly four point seven meters long. Okay, that is and pretty big. occasionally you feel that, but with the tech, you never feel that that's a problem. Mm-hmm. With the reversing camera and the three sixty degree camera and stuff like that, and I know there's going to be purists out there that go, "Oh, you should use the camera to reverse it." 
blah, 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 you shouldn't be able to drive if that's what you need a camera, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to see something. Right, someone reverse my Veracross without one then. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can reverse without them, but having that tech makes it so much easier for me to do that. Yes, that, that's my feeling. And I think sense. that's not a bad thing. But um, like I said, I think I said at the beginning there, it, the one that I had was in Atlantic Grey, which is a nice dark metallic grey. Really good colour, that. And the other one I've seen that looks good on it is the uh, Orient Red. Yeah, I do like that, actually. I think that's a re- I, I feel that, the, that those kind of, that those sort of metallic reds, like, like that Orient Red, should really be making a comeback because a lot of cars look great in them, particularly yeah, the Yeah, I mean, I, I've noticed a few more sort of the burgundy dark deep reds in mm-hmm. cars, and, and that, that is a, a very good look for cars, I think. I think it's, yeah. yeah. Just a minute. So, summing up, rounding up, how did you find it? What's overall? What did you think? If you I had to sum, I up. enjoyed it. I th- I enjoyed the EV ness of it because that was my okay. I've, I've driven a few electrified vehicles, but this is the first time I spent any time with an electrified vehicle, and it confirmed thoughts that I'd had and expressed on shows before, where I think it's a gateway into a full on electrified vehicle. Mm-hmm. because it takes away the range anxiety. Although, having said that, I didn't want to use the petrol engine. Yeah. Because I had the electric engine, and I enjoyed the electric motor driving experience, which, which sounds very odd. Um, but But, yeah, but I know what you mean. I enjoyed that technology bit because, oh, I'm doing something new. And look, I, I can see, I and mean, it's almost like it was gamification from the battery point of view with the um, regenerativeness of it, that I can see, oh, look, if I drive in this manner, I can help extend how long I can have this futuristic driving style. Because <laughs> that's what we... it felt like a little bit, because yeah. normally I'm in a, a rattly combustion engine. And that's what I drive most of the, my cars. Uh, that's what I typically drive. So to get in this one, which is silent, and you go, oh, that's, that's the future, isn't it? But would you get... Do you think you'd get bored of it, or would you just get used to it? Uh, I don't think I'd get bored of it. Okay. I, I think I would get used to it in a way, it, it, it's so far as I would adapt my style of driving. Mm-hmm. Okay. As, as I wa- felt I was towards the end of the week. Yeah, yeah, just just bedding into it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, and and it it also confirmed uh, what I what we've expressed on this show that we think having an a uh, a plug in hybrid in a normal looking vehicle that doesn't really shout too much of its alternative um, motorness, yeah, too much that that makes it popular for a lot of people because a lot of people are very conservative with the small C in their purchasing choices. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have something where people go, oh, you've got one of those eco boxes, haven't you? Because that's yeah, still that's um, still a thing. Ugh, yeah, so looking for the looking for the or, or, or organic wholemeal slippers and stuff. Yes, quite. <laughs> Sandals, even. <that's>... Yes. <laughs> so I think sticking it in a normal SUV... On one point, it's brilliant because people go, oh, I can, I, I, I look like I'm just in a normal SUV, so I'm happy to have that. But also, it's showing people this is in normal cars. Mm-hmm. Or this is in, it's not just in a small city box. This works in a 4x4. Yeah. And I think that's a good um, educational because mm-hmm. it's making people aware, isn't it? That's that's the key problem for electrified vehicles now, is making them aware of what they can do, what they are capable of, and how that's only ever going to improve. Yeah, and you've got the two factions, of course. You've got stealth, like the, like the Outlander, and then you've got the, look at me, I'm different! Yeah. Um, BMW i models, for example. Mm. Um, and people will fit into one camp or the other, and they're unlikely to be sitting too much in the middle. Um, but there. So... I think we've covered all the talking points. So, do you have a one paragraph, one paragraph summary? If you're looking for a family size 
plug-in hybrid stroke electrified vehicle and you want an elevated driving position, enough of your routes have decent enough um, charging infrastructure or your destinations have charging infrastructure, whether that's your home, work or where you go to visit, then I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, particularly if you look at the um, the the lower priced end of the range. I was going to say, would you recommend the model you had or would you probably recommend people go for something a bit more? I pr- in the probably the, the, yeah, but towards the, the beginning of the range. <laughs> the one I had at that price, that's that's quite a lot of money. It, yeah. Um, even monthly uh, or whatever, that's quite a lot of money. So, I mean, if you're... If you're getting it as a uh, from as a company car and you can afford it, then I can see the sense in that. But it's seven percent um, benefit in kind if it's a company car, isn't it? Because it's the lowest and no. Sorry, I should have asked this earlier on, shouldn't I? Seven percent benefit in kind and no congestion charge, isn't it? Yeah, at the moment yeah. that is because it's forty nine um, grams per kilogram uh, per kilometer, even or practically nothing as it's also known. Yes, quite. <laughs> so I liked it. It coped with us. It coped with children it it did um typical school runs trips to supermarkets trips to visit uh friends and relatives um it's smart it's handsome i think it's uh i wouldn't personally go for the top end of the range because i think Mm -hmm. you will still benefit the 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 bits that i felt were the benefit you will gain at you will have still at uh, whichever whichever model you pick Cool. Fantastic. Thank you, Andrew. For <laughs> that was going to sound terrible. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing with us today. Um, which is <laughs> meant to sound like at all. But yes, no. Thanks for sharing that, that and explaining it a, a, a bit more. Because because I think many of us see see the Outlander on the road and we go, oh, it's, a, it's you know, it's a, it's an SUV. What's it? What's it like? What's it like to have for a? Well, no, I was very keen to try one because I. I hoped it was going to do the things that we've talked that we felt it was doing. Mm -hmm. And I was interested to see that it did do those. Um, So that, that was, it it was, I like that sort of tech. Yeah. Did you, did you connect your mobile phone to it? No, at the time that I had the car, the um, app was was still still not to be activated. So oh, okay. I I couldn't I couldn't take advantage of um checking battery levels and all the other stuff you can do via mm. the app that's um, a shame. that is now back up uh, online. That's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. God, I was looking forward to making fun of you there and completely failed. Um, <laughs> anyway, I think that, that pretty much that pretty much rounds up, uh, doesn't it? This sort of new format of, of Review it is a review, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is. so this new new format of review. This is, this is um, our type of review. Yeah, because we we decided that instead of one of us droning on for thirty minutes, that this would hopefully be uh, a bit more interesting uh, for listeners. Uh, so please, if you've got any feedback, uh, I mean, any comments on it, then uh, don't hesitate to uh, drop us a line. You can share your thoughts uh, with us and the show at Motoring Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, and on the contact page of motoringpodcast.com, the hub of all our activities. Please don't forget to leave a review and ratings on iTunes or however your podcast app lets you do such a thing. It really does matter. Andrew, best way to get in touch with you? The best way will be via Twitter. If you search for a Crack Windscreen, you will find me. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you personally as opposed to the show, Alan, what's the best way? Again, it's Twitter, and it's at AJP Bradley, B-R-A-D-L-E-Y. Uh, we'll be back with both the normal news show uh, and also with rear view um, very soon. But until then, I've been Alan Bradley. I've been Andrew Clues. And safe motoring.